Welcome to the Top 20 Video Game Music Show. We're back. This time, the theme is nothing too specific. It's whatever you've been listening to. Don't have to think too hard about it. Just play the stuff. We can get together. We can hear what other people have been listening to and, uh, and hang out. So, track one from Blasphemous 2. This is Corona de Siete Azahares, composed by Carlos Viola. And it was nominated by Satsui no Jamaica. Nice um, sort of like bed of, of, a, of acoustic guitar sound, classical guitar sound. I like the reverb too. Just creates a nice world and texture. Always a sucker for that change. You know, what I love about this is the, the bed of that acoustic and the, like the classical, that sound is so authentic and nicely captured, that, that sort of like Gypsy King style. I don't know if that's flamenco or a different style. You can just really hear that it's, to me, it really sounds like somebody real was playing this. And so you have that, that as a, as a nice foundation, this organic feel. But then there's like a lot of reverb on it, which gives it a more spacey, ethereal feel. And then you have, you know, a lot of reverb on the on the top melody line too. And then also that sort of string part that comes in for the second part of the melody that just like rises in and then takes over for a while. So it allows you to do something a little strange or a little more video gamey. Piano too, great point. Uh, just on top of it, which is nice, and I, I like that's always a good strategy for a video game music is to take something Known and then change it a little bit You know you have like oh, Sounds like distortion on that part right before the The viola came in again Yeah, there, there's like so much. There's like a bit more gain on that. Really, really nice. Beautiful. Nice one to start off with. So our next track is called Sea of Stars. Actually, the game is Sea of Stars. 
The track is Stars Align on the Assembly Line, composed by Eric Brown and chosen by Claudio. That part there that kind of like where it sounds kind of like um like a super nintendo sample of like a classical guitar it really sounds like and that little bit of delay not reverb makes it really sound like it's on the super nintendo solace good to see you return This is so banging. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's like so sinister. It has a real kind of um that kind of like 80s, like a late 80s, early 90s, kind of like hard techno edge to it. Dark wave or synth wave or whatever you call it. And then with those 909 claps. Dance with somebody. Very cyberpunk. It's really driving. Driving neon, Neo Tokyo. So I don't know much about this, but it would be. You were saying that uh, it has different styles, a bit of a turning point. Yeah. This is, The nice thing about this track is like it's got that dark and that drivingness to it, but it has like a real kind of like swagger it has a it's very like sure of itself and like this kind of lead bit especially that kind of like meow, 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 meow. sort of like a it's like the good guy but a good guy with an edge coming to save the day meow, meow. and what a beautiful looking game it is see I like this kind of remake where they go let's go back and we'll still keep what made pixel art great but just um you know up the colors up the technology do what they couldn't do back then i don't like this this bullshit where it's like 3d fucking models of the of the 2d pixel art and it's like it i'm sure it's way faster to do but it just looks cheap to me this looks beautiful 
Wow, what a great track. I gotta add this one to the list. Like this style in Octopath Traveler, that's that's how you do retro. Video game. F Next up, you know, that's capital Y U dash N O. This is put out on the PC 98 back in 1996. The track is Movement, composed by Ryu Uem Umemoto. Chosen by Rudy. funny because it's kind of like half of a dance beat because you have the but not all the time just at once and then you have kind of a constant but it's like the kick and the hi-hat aren't committing they're just going there and kind of floating so it's like it's about to start going crazy but then it doesn't and this is like a more constant beat but it has that bit of a hip, hip skip and a hop how beautiful are those chords on melody? This is like just some of the best of what you can do with a PC-98. So chill. Oh, those like those chords on... I think I'm wearing my headphones backwards. So maybe on the left side. There's sort of like... It sounds like there's two chords going... There's like a call and response on the chords. And they're just that like really comforting, sort of jazzy fusion-y chords. Like something you'd hear hanging out in, in the, some like Neo-Tokyo police headquarters. Like I'm thinking of uh, like if you were playing Snatcher hanging out at the Junker headquarters or, or almost like Ace Attorney in a way. Just incredible chords. All right, next up from Rain Code. This is Deduction Denouement, composed by Masafumi Takada, chosen by Zenmus. Another cozy jam. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Nice modulation there. Sounds familiar to something, eh? You know, like Final Fantasy or something? Not this part. But yeah, that descending part really sounds like it's from something. So they're saying this is the the future of Danganronpa. Yeah, I love I love Japanese fusion because. It, it, what I love about Japanese fusion is that, especially like in the 80s, and like that city pop feel, is it, it tickles a part of your brain that likes 
interesting chords, you know, you might call them crunchy or spicy chords and and slash chords where you just kind of like you're you know, you're slamming different bass notes together with these chords and and so for like the the more music nerd side finds a lot of enjoyment. It does, it's not predictable, but it's always done in a way that also pleases the you know, your average listener too, where it's usually catchy. You know, it's not like jazz fusion where you're going to hear like a 10 minute bass solo odyssey. You know, it's, it still has like, the drum beat is, is pretty straightforward and that kind of holds it all together. And even like, you know, the form and the arrangement of the song are, they're, you know, they're done in very approachable ways. It's kind of like Motown, you know, Motown and, and funk and stuff. It's sort of simple enough you can dance along to it and you can sing along to it, but it has enough room and structure where jazz musicians who want to explore, they can. Th this part. Very like, I don't know, Final Fantasy 13 or something maybe? 10? Yeah, it does have an improvised feel. It, like, feels like it just goes through different solo sections. It's nice, really nice long, long progression. It just keeps going up and then down. It's like a really slow roller coaster. And that's the thing with like the fretless bass. Having the real bass or real guitar, especially the real bass, you can feel somebody playing it and, and sliding into it. It gives it that organic feel, especially when you have the drums that sound like they could be programmed. Keys just by themselves always sound a bit programmed unless you're really messing with like uh, you know the, the action of hitting it and the dynamics but that real bass just gives it that human feel alright next up from Homestuck P2792 this track is Past Carcat Wake Up Alternia Bound Carcat's theme, composed by Toby Radiation Fox. This was chosen by Mr. Frickio. I feel like I I said a lot of words there, and uh, I, I gave a lot of information, so definitely enough for you to find what you're looking for. So let's listen to it. Very Toby Fox. Like Toby Fox's stuff is he, he has like a he's right in your face. Even in his even his like chiller songs, he's like so direct with his music. He's not afraid to go like really fast. He like just teeters on the line of obnoxious. It's he he kind of I find he writes music like like a teenager, not in skill. Obviously, he's a really like master player. He can shred with the best of them, but he has that like teenager energy, you know, of like pff. it's. Uh, I can see I can see why like younger groups really get devoted to his games and his his music because it's just so in your in your fucking face, you know? Maybe I'll start that again. Oh, this is very circusy, yeah. And you know, he has a way of making a lot of his melodies and stuff sound like characters speaking. I don't know if that's just because of playing Undertale and, and you know you feel like um what's his name? The guy who does the puns. You know, you can feel like you can hear him talking with these kind of this like musical choice. Robert 
There's a lot of cool pitch shifted stuff that's sort of pitch shifted down. Feels like the whole thing's just like taking a big deep breath in and a deep breath out. Okay. That was cool. That was nice and short. But yeah, I mean, Toby Fox, how cool is it that when you just start playing anything, it has that feel? And he's just not, he's, you know, he doesn't mess around. He's not afraid to make a statement with his music. Very powerful that way. So for this next track, I had um, been listening to this one. And probably because it's so short, it rolled over to another the next track automatically. And I really liked it so much that I wanted to put it in as one of my submissions. So from the same game, this is Troll Cops. But this one was composed not by Toby Fox, by, but by Eric Scheel. The Ghostbuster hook. I'm afraid of no ghost. Mm, some modulation. Just got that cheesy kind of lounge, but, uh, whirling organ and cheap kind of sounding drums. Everything passed through like a bit of a filter to give it like a lo-fi, crunchy, cheaper sound. This could be great in like Grim Fandango or something. Like a retro detective, kind of. Like a funky little lounge you're visiting. Next one from the game Sonic after the sequel, whatever the hell that means. This is Moon Mansion, Act One, composed by Andy Tunstall, and we're back up at the top with Satsui Jamaica. Mm -hmm. It's fun to check out the comments, see what the people are thinking. Real bit crushed uh, vocal sound there.
<laughs> Interesting little tracks. It's a nice little, uh, pretty funky, kind of like a mysterious vibe to it, like a heist. It really has everything. I mean, it's got you know distorted guitars. It's got like a, that kind of like electronica type drums and really funky synth bass, funk guitar, symphony. <laughs> it's a very video game track. It's a very user made fan track. It's nice. There's just so much you can do with uh, when you are trying to sound like Sonic music. And I think they, even though it's way different than something you probably any ever hear in a Sonic game, it still does feel like a Sonic track. Just like with the bounciness and the, and the fun, and the funkiness of it. All right, let's go from fan-made game two, the powers of Square Enix with Octopath Traveler 2, Den of Darkness, composed by Yasunori Nishiki, chosen by Claudio. It's like they're in the Resident Evil Mansion. Yeah, really beautiful track. A nice, uh, a wistful barm feel. A little dark section here. That was Olive. Almost 14 months old. I mean, this track is just an example of how a professional Square Enix can make something sound, but still have emotion to it. It's not just like throwing money at it and throwing a big orchestra at it. It actually goes to some interesting places. You know what I really like is in is when they're doing the um, the two three two three the way they have it. It's not just like bum ba. It's like bum ba bum ba. Well, sometimes they do that. But yeah, it definitely has that feel of somebody performing too. I 
I really like that. Uh, it's like. I wonder if somebody is playing that. I I don't really I don't listen to enough of this stuff to be able to compare. Like, is that a live player or not? To me, it sounds like it's hard to tell when there's so many violins, and that's how good the samples are, right? I would think maybe the lead player is real, but it is so perfectly and, and rhythmic. It almost is like how a keyboard player would play it. Hard to tell, but it's really nice. It definitely gives you the feeling like you've stepped into something big, you've discovered something big, and it's... And there's a lot of, like, I don't know, something for you to discover behind the scenes here. Like a regal on the outside, but uh, underneath, everyone here was transformed into a piece of furniture by a witch. Our next track is Trails Through Daybreak. The Decisive Point, composed by Mitsuo Singa, chosen by Rudy, also known as Kuru, Kuro no Kiseki. Enough of this fucking around. You know, with the with the opening bit, hearing like all that guitar, I was like, "Oh, okay, we're gonna have one of these JRPG modern kind of rock tracks." And then they just totally like when that break hit and that new instrument came in, this one, and then you have all these beautiful like electronic textures on top. They're just like I like guitars as a driving instrument. I play a lot of rock guitar, but there's something about it in, in these ones where. You know, it's really, sometimes it can sound just so bland, it's just like not enough texture. So I like it as a driving force and like a, a smaller texture underneath. But in something like this, I'm loving that synth they have over top. It's just so full and so round and so smooth and just conveys so much, you know? And then that's a good use of the guitar there. Oh, yeah! I mean, how fucking cool is that? So having this like big EDM festival lead sound and then doing the breakdown. Wow. And then the way it goes to, uh, it takes to a different chord there too to like, just give you a different feel. Like, you have that. Like, when we're on the, the part that the, uh, the guitar is kind of grinding on. And just build, 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 build on that. And then when you bring in that fucking awesome switch, and it's even good, like, modulating it away. <laughs> it's so cool. Ah. Uh, oh, well, good thing I was winding it there because the track ends. How cool is that? You know, that one... Now I can appreciate this intro more, knowing that it's gonna go somewhere else, but at first, when I just first heard this, I was like, alright, where's this gonna go? Hopefully somewhere else. And it did. And there, it, even that kind of like... <laughs> it's so sort of like late 90s, early 2000s.
All right. Enough of all that fun. Let's hear something from Final Fantasy fourteen. This is... I don't know. Hick Svint Leonis? S-V-N-T Leonis? Composed by Soken and chosen by Zenmis. Hespero's theme with official lyrics. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The V is pronounced as a U. Okay, so pick something. You're a real covent. I need to suck my dick. And this playlist just found its own nice form to it. Why the backing is so like chill and happy? Uh... It's weird because the vocal and like the drums and the guitar are so dirty and dark. And the lyrics are so just like dark. They're so like 15 year old boy poetry. A lot of animal imagery in here. The rats do not fear you. So what does that mean? That the rats like you? Or that you should fear rats because they don't fear you? Or that you are very rat-like? I don't know. There's a lot going on in here. But there's a lot going on in these battles. <laughs> Demoniac. <laughs> that's, that's a nice one. I can see like your parents send you to your room and they're like, don't let you play Final Fantasy XIV anymore and you just fucking blast the sound. Oh, damn. I'm gonna break down my parents and feel the blood. No regret crossing. Hey, earlier we spoke about Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney and now we get to hear the courtroom lobby theme, beginning overture composed by Masakazu Sugimori. And arranged by Akimi Kimura, chosen by Mr. Frickio. Oh yeah, 
I actually just started playing this one. Last time I was on a plane. Yeah, I got the version on, on the Switch of the 3DS. I think I got it on the Switch. It's pretty fun. I think it's, you know, it's, what's fun about it is that you... A lot of times, these kind of, like, visual novel or detective games, you just feel like it's a matter of time where, as long as I just keep clicking on everything on the screen, eventually I'm going to find the answer. Like, that's how I kind of feel about the some of the Telltale games that are not as inspired. You know, Telltale game is good when you have to make a really hard choice, like in The Walking Dead, where you're choosing basically who lives and who dies, you know, or who gets food or something. Uh, because, you know, being a leader is hard and you have to make hard decisions. But, you know, and there's some Telltale games where you just sort of walk around a scene and you click on everything and then eventually your character figures it out. And that's kind of boring. But with this game, it's... You you can't just keep randomly throwing things out, right? Or you're, you're going to lose. You're going to... I think that's how it works anyway. Maybe you can't just keep throwing things out, but it feels like you can't. You have to actually put the pieces together and, you know, pick the proper thing. And you have to think. And that is what, for me, video games are all about, is your input. Paying attention. Solving a problem. But the music is so iconic. It just really instantly transports you to this place. I like that just the, the solitary kick drum. Almost like a gavel. Or like big footsteps with, you know, purpose and just kind of like, bah, really sort of like proclaiming something. And then, da -da 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 -da. has kind of like an 80s courtroom TV show or like a police show kind of feel to it. But man, they were just so able to, to create moods so confidently. Yeah, it did have an SNES game feel to it. Kind of lo-fi. But cozy. Beautiful. So our next track is from Ace Combat 2. It's called Night and Day. It's a great old jazz song. Night and day. You are the one. Only you. Beneath the moon and under the sun. It's a great old jazz song about being obsessed with somebody. And it's composed by Nobuhide Isayama and Masako Ogami. And it's chosen by Satsui no Jamaika. Let's go. Oh, fuck, I said let's go. I don't think this is the jazz song. Nanjay. You are the one. From Ace Attorney to Ace Combat. <laughs> yeah, music in these games is always so proggy. A little uh, kunga. <laughs> Maybe manga. Uh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that they do... They just toss in instruments from all over the world. I feel like I've heard a lot of classical guitar in this game about state-of-the-art jet fighters. You know, like a classical guitar kind of takes a lot of skill to sort of nimbly float on top of the music. I guess a jet fighter is doing that above the war. Missile!
It is corny. But, you know, if you think about, like, Top Gun and... And I guess if they're going for that, like, 80s feel, it's very... It's over the top. It's flashy, you know. It is very, like... It is very, like... <laughs> it's just funny with all the, like, synth guitar and classical guitar and, like, crazy lead guitar and Latin percussion and stuff. You know. I don't... Where, where would this appear in the game? Obviously not in something like this, like the briefing screen. And when you're flying around, like, doing combat evases. Logging on. Bomb that village. Burn them all. <laughs> Next up from, originally from Romancing Saga, RE Universe. Uh, this is ever higher, but I believe the video and the music is going to be from Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm, Final Bar Line. Composed by Kenji Ito, chosen by Claudio. Yo, yo, let's go. Oh, hey, I play that game. Oh, oh my god. This playlist has like such a beautiful ramp to it. You started off chill, you hit the rock. Everybody was just on the exact same page. All I did was just take all your songs in order and it's worked out perfectly. Yeah, that's very, like you say, very Kenjito, very kind of uh, the violin and the synth, like Rudy sing. Oh, I fucking hate. You can be so stupid when, like, if I click on this part here and then press up and down, I control the volume. If I click up here or somewhere else, up and down moves the track, you know, the actual bar and so the volume. So dumb. Anyways, it's like, it, to me, it kind of sounds like Castlevania. You know, Symphony of the Night kind of style. Just the way it's like... It's just like constantly, constantly modulating. And then just like... These moments of just like jamming it, stuffing it full with notes. And then just kind of... Kind of stretching it out. So much like tension and release and all over the place. But feeling organized. And just like, it's such an urgency to it. Urgency! Ace Combat 2. Next up, from a second track from this game, you know. 
on the PC-98, chosen by Rudy and composed by Ryu Umemoto. This time it is Fate 2, The Law of Cause and Effect, version B. Sorry, version A fans. I love, I love that, that clang sound. It's like a very, very FM chip. It's like this metallic kind of guitar sound to it. so cool because it instantly takes me back to the Sega Genesis but everything just sounds so much better and the way they use those kind of it's like two note chords but with that kind of just fills so much it gives us such a nice pad and the drums they have that like they're so juicy sound Absolutely, Claudio. Yeah. Cool. That was beautiful. Must be a loop. The video says it goes on for another two minutes, but it must be a. Sounds like the loop point. Well, let's move on, shall we? All right, next up is going to be from SMT, Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Summoner. This is Raidu Kuzunoha versus the Soulless Army, the Great Tokyo, composed by Shoji Meguro, chosen by Zenmus.
I mean, all these Shoji Meguro um, tracks from Shin Megami Tensei and this whole Atlas world, they're always great. They're always, like, dense and cozy and interesting and give you a lot to think about and just, like, beautiful production. I mean, especially if you look at the visuals, this is from a PSP game put out in... No, that's not... So originally, I guess this game was 1995, and then this must have been a port to the PSP. So this is like the PSP version of the track. Interesting. So I guess like a remake of a Super Nintendo game. But you know, having the music be so uh, so like lush and modern sounding. Kind of fill in the gaps of what the primitive visuals have. It's just so cool. It's a PS2 game with a third person game. Okay. The plot thickens on uh, what the hell we're looking at from the story. Coming up to one, two, three, four, the last five tracks. This is from Mata Nui Online Game. Fight in the Hive, composed by Justin Lichter and chosen by Mr. Frickio. Bionicle, by the way, it's from Bionicle. I love the way that, um, well, it's not doing it now, but the one before was like, ding, ding, ding. and that little wah wah comes so quick, which gives it more of like a, kind of an alien feel, like you're not expecting, it's just, just pushing a bit, you know, there's so much tension. This is really, really dark, really dark and dense. This is sort of like a nice little hopeful piece. Yeah, it's got that Matrixy beat. That late 90s, early 2000s kind of industrial drums are like a hybrid of electronic and uh, rock. Pretty cool. All right, this next track I've played on here before. I played it during the Nobuo Uematsu one and probably just before because I was so excited by it. I'd signed up for the Apple Arcade. They had a trial, and then they got me because I forgot to un unsign for it. And uh, this is a... I think it's a Sakaguchi RPG, I believe. I know Uematsu composed it. Or maybe it's just a, a Square Enix iOS Arcade one, and they had Uematsu do it. I'll look that up. But anyway, the whole point is that it's it's a RPG I was playing on my phone, and then I got to the first town, and it had this incredible, beautiful, chilled out, mournful, reaching song. And I loved it so much, and I listened to it all the time. So here is Frontier Town by Nobuo Uematsu. <laughs>
Right, so Rudy was absolutely correct. This is not uh, made by Square at all. It's by Mist Walker, which was the company Sakaguchi, the man behind Final Fantasy 1 through 5 and then 9, went off to make. So he made Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, The Last Story, um, Terra Battle, and then this is one that they put out on iOS. And I played it for a few hours, didn't get too deep into it, but I really enjoyed what I played, and I really, really liked the music. It's just so bloody luscious. I love the, like the performance of that, whatever this is. Just like the way, where they choose to delay their notes and phrasing. Oh, so nice. Cool. I won't give away too many spoilers in this video. All right, back to Namco with a Rudy Pick R4 Ridge Racer Type 4, put out in the PS1 in 1998. This is Pearl Blue Soul. Yeah, 90s dance, baby. <laughs> Racing games really have some of the best music. There's like such an there's an energy to them and a slickness, but it's usually for some reason it always has like such beautiful texture, so smooth. Like the aesthetics of it is so nice. And I would think that you know, 1998, you're coming into this next generation of gaming. You have this beautiful CD audio. You got more like a grown up racing game and cutscenes and I think it just feels so it feels so modern. Gorgeous. I love how soft that hi hat is. Everything about it is just super soft, but pounding at the same time. Late saxophone. Beautiful. I think they call these Chicago Chicago chords. It's where you have the boom, but it's like a like done in fifths maybe I don't I don't know the exact musical theme but it's like that. it kind of all, almost only works on its own this really sounds like somebody from Europe's gonna be like pull up up the chair you're racing you're racing on floor gorgeous you can fall asleep to this well let's go down way down into the Basement with Danny Baranowski and the Binding of Isaac, chosen by Mr. Freckio. I love how glitchy that is.
such a beautiful depth to this uh, track. Nice big on the bass notes. Oh, man. I really like those like sort of chromatic chord changes there. That... Kind of like a waltz time, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but the, there's like so much going on with the kick drum. It gives it, it just gives it such a nice. Uh, there's like so much more depth to that. Like what great instrumentation! Just gives so much like depth and. Get like super super low frequencies and some of these beautiful high ones. Again, everything is just so soft and perfectly produced. Well, that was incredible. So our last one is going to be chosen by, I think this is Satsui Jamaica. This is from Dune Eternal. It is Ultra Kill, composed by R.C. Patala. confused I'm like oh is this like a is this like a D make of Doom Eternal or The game is actually having a piercer. Is that it? Or ultra kill. I can fucking know. That's oh, ultra kill. Yeah? Okay, so this is like a 90s throwback shooter. I mean, that's why they call it the Doom Eternal, I see. Yeah. It's like a desert level. With the feeling of Doom Eternal. Which the uh, composer of the original Doom, what's his name, Mick Gordon? Mm -hmm. He had like a huge. Didn't he have a huge fight with them? Didn't like Bethesda kind of fuck him over? And, uh, and like, I think the developers are all pissed about that. Which is too bad because Doom 2016 was just such a great success. Such a nice return to form. I mean, the Bethesda... They seem to be a company that has a lot of goodwill with their people. With Elder Scrolls and constantly releasing Skyrim. And then they made a couple weird decisions like you know, Fallout 76. 
being weird with Doom Eternal. How can we, how can we shit on that? You have like, what a gift. That like, shit, we have one of the most popular soundtracks, one of the most striking soundtracks, one of the most recognizable soundtracks in, um, in the modern era of gaming. In the last decade. And you just probably get greedy with a composer. Something happens. Greed, I'm sure, money, like timing and deadlines all, all came into it. Like, if I really knew nothing about the story, it probably has to do with that. Wanting control of something or forcing something. It's like, you just ruined it. You had, you had something so good. You just respect that. The devs, mainly the main director, seem to not give a shit about him throughout the development. Oh, okay. Fuck, even though he's like, that's such a big part of it. Like, you know, with movies. Maybe you to a, I mean, TV shows as well. But, you know, you think about, like, a movie like Star Wars and how important the soundtrack is, the score. And in video games, too, like, you know, we've talked in here a bunch of times how, especially in other Bethesda games, yeah, I mean, half of, half or more of playing Skyrim or an Elder Scrolls game is getting to play a game that matches the incredible soundtrack so well. It's just, it gives us so much power. So, if anything, they should have doubled down on working with them and tried to, you know, integrate. Like, wouldn't that have been a much better story if they go for the sequel? We're really going to work even closer with Nick Gordon, build on the soundtrack that he created, and, and, and try to make it even more cohesive. Like, there's probably a lot of people who know the Doom soundtrack and have just never even played the game. So, and then they had to rip and tear in the new one, did they? Alright, well, this was a hell of a lot of fun, like always. I'll see you in another two weeks, and I'll see you on Discord. I realized my uh, notifications were off on Discord, so that's why I was missing everything. But they're back on, baby. Uh, if you're watching YouTube video, this is going to end. You should be able to, if you want to join our Discord, you can help choose what the next topic is going to be. And you can have your songs played on here so we can talk about it and you can join us in the chat. I'm going to try and stream some more games or at least play some more games and chat about them. And I'll see you on Discord. Thank you so much to the people that nominated songs, for the people that showed up today. Chris and Rudy and Risky Boots, Claudio... Solace, Zenmus, Mr. Frickio, Satsu Jamaica. Super fun. Always fun. Talk to you later. Bye bye.